All right, so in this video, I want to share with you five simple and easy things that you can start incorporating into your lifestyle pretty much right away that can really support and nourish the health and optimal functioning of the digestive system. These are things that I've done personally, I'm still doing personally on a regular basis, and things that I constantly am coming back to that are really helpful. And obviously there's a lot of things that we could do, but for the sake of the video, I've just picked uh, five really important and uh, uncommon things, basically. Things that people typically don't do. So the first thing, and one of the most important things in my opinion, is that whenever we eat, to just eat. <laughs> Meaning, uh, no watching TV, no staring at a screen of any kind, whether it's a computer, or a phone, or a TV, or reading a magazine or a book, but basically when we eat, to just eat. And part of the idea here is that it helps us to just be present and mindful with our food, meaning we're actually taking the time to chew it, to taste it, to be with it and pay attention to it. And also it's helping to make sure that our blood is staying in our digestive system and our stomach where it needs to be, rather than you know being sucked up to our brain. And uh, this is a, a big thing that often causes a lot of indigestion for people. Maybe they just live with it all the time, don't even really know it. So that's why it's really, really important to just do that. Uh, number two is to start including bitter foods and really start to open ourselves and start to welcome the bitter flavor. Now, in our modern world, this flavor is really mostly forgotten and people are really all about sweet mostly <laughs> and but pretty much anything other than bitter so vegetables like radicchio or endive or even beets all types of different herbs and supplements are can be bitter and in general just starting to look for bitter foods and help starting to incorporate these into our life can be really helpful and just in a simple way, if you want to just get started, there's a classic herbal formulas that are called bitters, which literally just contain bitter herbs. I think some of them are really good, but personally I don't think they're bitter enough, but it could be a good place to start and just a nifty thing to carry around to you know, support digestion. The third thing that you can start incorporating if you haven't already is fermented foods. So this will be things like sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, kefir, water kefir, yogurts, and fermented vegetables of all shapes and sizes. And the major thing that we want to figure out here is number one, which of these things really works for us and our metabolism. And number two, making sure that these things are all raw and unpasteurized and organic if possible. Because if they're raw and they're pasteurized, it or if they're not raw and they're pasteurized, then it basically negates the whole benefit, which is trying to get the live probiotics and the live enzymes. And these are great digestive aids and great things to really incorporate in our diet for the long term, for the rest of our life, basically. And this is a traditional food that pretty much most every single traditional culture consumed. Just like everything else that we've said so far, pretty much when it, you know humans for throughout most of history, when they ate, they just ate and they ate bitter foods. They ate a whole wide variety of foods and flavors and tastes because that's what was around. And thirdly, they ate fermented foods partially as a uh, means of you know, storage and prolonging and getting more use from food, but also for the health benefits. So these are not really new things. These are just things that we all forgot. And I, I don't think we're necessarily any better off because we forgot them. So number four thing that we can start doing is castor oil packs, uh, which basically this is just uh, putting some castor oil on your stomach or on your abdomen and putting like a, a wool or a natural cloth over it and putting a heating pad on top of that. And even if you don't have the castor oil, you can get, you don't want to mess with that. Even just the heating pad over the abdomen, I found sometimes to be incredibly helpful and soothing and just uh, kind of gets things moving. if. Maybe we've been traveling or for some reason we're not feeling so good and things kind of get off. Uh, number four or number five, I guess, is, is a bit more of a, a big picture thing. And that is really starting to investigate and discover and then eliminate foods that are allergenic or inflammatory for us. 
This is going to require developing some sensitivity, some body sensitivity, and starting to really pay attention. Which if we're doing all the other things that I've listed before, it's going to be a lot easier. And neither of these things are things that we're just going to take like a pill, or we're just going to do once, so once a month or every few times a year, and it's going to do a lot for us. These are basic foundational human skills that uh, most of us have completely forgotten. Obviously with the exception of the heating pad, everything else has just been a common thing that humans have done for a long time. But we don't anymore and I think our health is suffering because of it. Uh, so that's a really important thing to start to tune into is how certain foods affect you. You know, if you eat something and you get mucus, you eat something and you get itchy in your ears or itchy in your throat or your nose gets congested or your nose starts running or you get indigestion or you get you know a kind of a burning or uncomfortable sensation in your abdomen just subtle things to start to tune into to add and subtract different foods from my diet to see oh actually i've been eating eggs every day for breakfast but actually you know it turns out they're slightly allergenic and inflammatory for me oh which that's a true story because i had that personal experience where i had to realize I can't really eat eggs that much because I just get weird like dry mouth and weird sort of allergic reactions but every once in a while it's okay but yeah but I pretty much gave myself that allergy because I ate a ton of eggs every day for quite a while but different story uh, the last thing which I'll kind of add in just as a supportive bonus if you want to call it that but again it's something which used to be common sense and just human knowledge but we forgot it is really starting to pay attention to and understand the energetics and functions of different foods. And this might sound weird because we're conditioned in this sort of uh, Western paradigm where a, f a food is just minerals or carbohydrates and proteins and fats in a certain ratio and depending on that ratio it's going to be a different type of food. Well, uh, cultures throughout pretty much all of human history didn't necessarily look at things in those way. They really understood things a bit differently, which more of their function, more of their energetic quality, meaning what they do in the body and to the body and how they affect the circulation of different things in the body. So it just in a simple way, uh, we can all understand that heat kind of expands and hot kind of, or heat expands and cold contracts. You know, when we get cold, we tend to sort of do this sort of thing but when we get hot we tend to not really do this we tend to want to like spread out and expose as much surface area as possible so we can try to cool off that's just a basic common sense obvious understanding thing that everyone knows in their own body likewise when people get cold people put, start to put their hands in the same places when people get cold they usually don't put their hands you know, out here or they don't put them on their knees or they don't you know, people put their hands, everyone, pretty much universally in the same place because that's where the heat is. That's common sense, natural, instinctual. Food is a very similar thing. So we start to understand these different uh, energetics that we can make more informed decisions based on our own unique uh, constitution or diet or health conditions and or what we might be feeling in that moment. So these are all just really simple, easy, ridiculously basic things that a lot of people aren't doing. I spent most of my life not doing it. I didn't even know they existed. It was only until I actually got into this stuff and started studying it. I was like, oh yeah, this makes, this makes sense. So yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully, more importantly, you'll start incorporating some, if not all of these things into your lifestyle. Except for the, the castor oil pack and the heating pad. That's more of a a supplementary supportive thing. It's not something you necessarily need to do every day, uh, whereas everything else is pretty much a regular everyday kind of thing. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel, post a comment on the video, share the video, and I'll talk to you soon.